All right, guys, this is Ross. I have a great video for anybody out there who's growing some annual vegetables, um, particularly those of you guys who are growing in a smaller space. You know, this plot right here is actually my, my summer garden and what's left of it. We're now at the end of the summer. We're now actually into the fall. We're approaching October 1st here in the Philadelphia area. And this plot isn't really all that big, guys. You know, it's 10 foot wide by 12 foot long. And then I do actually have a three foot extension of that uh, back here for my tomatoes, my eggplants, my peppers. Those guys really go all the way till frost, which is really nice, or maybe about 15 days before our average first frost. So I still have a couple more weeks with these guys. This is the remainder here of my orange glow watermelon. I have a couple more melons that could ripen. I hope they're going to be sweet um, with enough leaf material for photosynthesis. We'll talk about what I'm going to do with these in just a minute. But here's my really big tip for you guys out there. It took me a number of years to realize this. And I don't know anyone else that's really mentioning this kind of thing is that I want to be able to grow food. I want to be able to make use of this garden space all year round. I want to grow as much food in here as possible all year round, right? So how do I achieve that if this is my garden here that's specifically for the summer? Because we do have this area right here that gets the most amount of light. This is our southern exposure area here. Um, it gets the most amount of light, therefore the most amount of heat. Uh, it's positioned really well. Uh, the soil warms up here very quickly in the spring and in the summer. So this is a great area I find just for my summer garden. But if you think of your summer crops, you know, other than maybe these guys back here, like my tomatoes, my eggplants, my peppers, I plant those either from seed or from transplant here in the Philadelphia area. I plant them, let's say May 1st. And then now all the way till frost, which is November 1st, they'll be here. So they're here for about six months out of the year, which is, a pretty long time considering some of the other summer crops, right? Like I've already pulled out of here my corn. I've pulled out of here my uh, squash. I had other different types of melons in here. My cucumbers didn't last very long. So there are crops that don't necessarily last six months. And the, really the only way I'm able to do that with my tomatoes is because I'm growing them vertically up these poles and that really keeps them disease free. So I figure if these guys have to sit here for six months and these other crops are only going to be here for maybe four months, right? I could plant them, let's say, you know, things like my squash, my cucumbers, all the cucurbit family, the melons and things like that. I could plant them June 1st. That's really when the temperatures start to warm up. You know, things that uh, are in that family really need warmer soil, like beans and things like that. They really need those warmer soil temperatures. So somewhere around, uh, let's say June 1st, I plant them, they start getting going, and then sometime around really today, or even in September, they're done. You know, they don't last very long. I could obviously do some succession planting and make them last a bit longer into this portion of the season. But as an example, I could just say, well, they're really only going to last for four months. Let's just use that as a conservative estimate. So if I have food in my summer garden in this giant area this is a really big area here and it's only growing food for four months out of the year what can i do with the other eight months so i had this realization that well i love to grow garlic i love to grow onions i love to grow shallots why not plant all these alliums now in the fall because this is what you have to do here in this climate is actually to plant them in the fall to then harvest them the following spring. Now you could plant some of this, like the onions, maybe some of the shallots, but probably not. Um, you could plant the onions in the spring and then harvest them sometime in the summer. But that doesn't necessarily line up, I think, with this plan, with this whole mindset of having, I guess, like growing food in here all season long, 12 months out of the year, right? So essentially with these alliums, what's going to happen is that I plant them now. Today is October 1st. We're close to it. And then I harvest them sometime around June 1st of the following year. So they're there for eight months. And then once June 1st rolls around, I'm going to be planting or even have planted them prior 
because I'm going to leave some space. I'll show you guys. I'll leave some space in between the rows of these alliums, and we can transplant in our heat-loving summer crops, and they can get a little bit of a head start, maybe a two-week head start, before I harvest all of these alliums, and then that way I'm making really the most use out of this whole space. And I think that really, to me, makes the most sense. I'll give you another example. So if you look at this in terms of the spring garden or the fall garden, here's my area right next door that gets a little bit less light. It's a cooler area. And this is really great for my spring crops. So this area actually gets really warmed up in the spring because there's no leaves on the trees. So this is a great area in the early spring and also in the late fall when there is no leaves on the trees again. This area gets a significantly more amount of warmth than it normally would. And then in the heat of my summer, because these giant shade trees here have leaves on them, this is a much cooler area. So what happens is these guys, I plant them out in early spring, let's say around March or even April. I can harvest most of this in June. Even some of it I can have in the ground, like these carrots for an extended period of time. I've had them all the way in the ground since April. So you can have an extended harvest. And then what you can do is actually plant some of your new crops in the summer to then have them harvested in the fall or even in the winter time. And you can use additionally some season extension, which we will. This is a cold frame back here, which will have plastic over top. We have low tunnels that I've set up here. So plastic will go over top of this stuff. So essentially in this area here of just growing spring and fall crops, I'm able to have food in here all year round, which I've never really heard anybody say. I don't know why people thought, that I guess I never thought for really, what is it, like six years now or something that I've been growing food, that this is really just a new thought, which is kind of crazy to me. Um, I thought maybe I was too cold here to be able to have food all year round, regardless if it's a summer plot, regardless if it's a fall or spring crop uh, plot, I can have food all the time. And the only real difference here, I think, and you can kind of do this yourself, is to think about this, well, the fall or the spring, let's say, comes first, there's that summer right in between it, and then there's the fall. So essentially you're just, you can basically combine two seasons together with one season blank in the middle. So it's the same thing here. There's the winter, it comes first, then there's the spring, which we can just ignore, and then there's the summer, right? So in between those two seasons, you have to have one empty season. And there, I think, lies the success of how this all works. So even if you lived, let's say, I don't know, in a climate that didn't necessarily have a more traditional winter time like I do here. Think about this in the same way that I just did in that you guys don't necessarily have to have. Um, I mean, I guess maybe you could even grow food all year round no matter what, but think about it in terms of when is your winter and then when is your summer? You know, when is your spring and when is your fall and combine those two seasons together to then enable yourself to have food all year round. I've just never heard that thought before. And even me just coming up with it, it's kind of a little bit difficult to explain. So anyway, I think that makes a whole lot of sense. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. So we're going to plant some alliums. Um, I have garlic here that I purchased. We have some elephant garlic. Uh, my garlic last year got actually attacked by some uh, leaf miners and I don't really want to plant that stock. We have some onion sets uh, that I grew myself. And then the last thing kind of before we get into that is these melons. What am I going to do with these melons? Because this whole area is going to be basically dedicated to my alliums. So this whole area, I'm going to plant as many alliums as possible in this plot. But this is all in the way, isn't it? So I figure this here will not be here in the future. I think in a future year, these melons will not be a conflicting issue with these alliums. But because this is an orange glow watermelon, I've never tried it. It's supposed to be very good, right? It's got orange flesh, that tropical flavor. I'm going to leave this here for a couple more weeks. 
And then I'm going to come in here again around, let's say, October 15th. And I'm going to do a second planting of some alliums. So I'm not, I guess, too concerned, but I am sort of concerned because this is not really how I would do this in the future. But what I'm going to do is actually remove some of these melons because I really just want to focus all that energy, all those carbohydrates that hopefully is there because there isn't too many leaves. I mean, these vines don't look too great. You know, hopefully there's enough energy, enough photosynthesis producing those carbohydrates for these last couple melons. And I imagine they'll be ready sometime in the next two to three weeks. Um, and in that time, I, I hope this isn't a waste. And, you know, I guess you could make an argument that they won't be sweet enough anyway because uh, it's so late in the season. It's a bit colder. Things are slowing down. The soil uh, temperatures are a bit colder. And maybe there's a chance that these melons here, I have one there and one here, they just won't be that good. And therefore, this was kind of a waste and I should have just planted my alliums right here anyway. But um, we're gonna find out. We're gonna see what these two melons here do. So I've got three melons here that have got some significant size to them. And hopefully that's enough. Um, I just cut out the other three that are a bit smaller and they certainly just will not have enough. Um, losing our microphone here, guys. But they certainly will not have enough energy, I think, or time to ripen at this point of the season. I hope you guys heard all that. But um, yeah, I think our, our melons, it's, it's kind of a dream at this point, I think, to get anything really sweet out of them, to get a great tasting melon at this point of the year. But I don't want to give up. So what we're going to do, I want to show you exactly how I'm doing this. Planting out the garlic, planting out the elephant garlic, um, also planting out these onions because I'm doing them in a very specific way that I would imagine a lot of you guys probably wouldn't do yourself or wouldn't even think of to do yourself. So um, all of this stuff has different spacing, right? And I'm gonna plant first, I think, because, well, essentially because the onions are the lowest growing, I think. We're gonna plant the onions here first because the angle of the sun goes this way. So I'd rather have the lower crops in the front and the higher crops in the back. Uh, so we're gonna plant the onions here, I think, and we'll plant the garlic maybe a here, and then we'll plant the elephant garlic, which is even larger back here. So uh, let's, I guess, start off with this garlic just because I have it in my hands. What I would recommend, I mean, realistically, you gotta get some large bulbs of garlic here, guys. You gotta get some large cloves, because if you want large garlic, you need to start with this first. This is absolutely key. Um, and if you don't have the right stock, maybe, you bought your garlic from a nursery and they send you some smaller bulbs, you're just not gonna be able to succeed. I'm sorry, you're not gonna be able to succeed in getting large enough bulbs for yourself. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit of a shame in all honesty uh, when you realize that, oh, you know, this is kind of a waste in a way because I could have this whole time been getting larger garlic if only I had gotten myself a larger stock. So I paid extra for this and my stock personally for the last couple years has not been all that big. It's not the end of the world, but um, I would like to have my own stock that's permanent and it did get affected by, like I said, it got affected by the leaf miner and I don't wanna keep spreading that pest to my other alliums. So I, decided not to go with my stock. And right now I'm just planting them every four inches. And we're planting them obviously the right side up. This is really key with the alliums. You don't want to plant them upside down. And this is exactly how you plant garlic in a, a cold climate like my own is that you got to plant this stuff in the fall. This is hard neck garlic. It produces an, a, uh, a flower stalk. 
which in my mind is the only garlic worth planting here in this climate because I love the scapes. They're so, so good. There's a reason why they're so expensive at the store. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna put some pretty decent space between these rows. Normally what I would do is I would actually just plant a block of it. I would not plant them in rows. I just plant a block of it. So I'll do one row of garlic, another row of garlic, but the next row of garlic is four inches apart. I'll bring you guys in in just a moment. This row here that I'm doing is about eight inches apart. So this is a little bit, this is obviously further than what I would normally do. And I'll show you in a minute why I'm doing this exactly. We'll put this last one in. Put it in the right way. This garlic, if you plant it now, and most of these alliums, you plant them now, you have to really figure out what the right time of the year is for you guys. For me, it is uh, around October 1st. But they'll put out some leaf growth. They'll root themselves in a little bit. You don't want to have too much growth because it could be too cold in your winter time and it could kill the garlic. But I'll bring you guys in real close here and show you. Really simply, we just planted one clove every four inches. In between the rows is eight inches because what's going to happen sometime in June, maybe I should have went even further. I'll have to experiment with this a little bit in the exact spacing, but in between this row, I'm going to transplant before I harvest this garlic sometime around May 15th, June 1st, I'm going to transplant in from seed starts that I started indoors or in the greenhouse. I'm going to plant them in between these two rows. That's going to give them a chance to get themselves acclimated. And then around June 1st, that's really when the soil warms up anyway for these summer crops for them to start taking off. And this garlic, historically here in my yard, I plant it October 1st and I harvest by June 1st. So that's a really, I think, a great way in my mind. And maybe if you could wait even until June 15th, I've done that. But in my mind, that's a really great way to get food here all year round because you're basically planting the one now. And then I'm coming in here in the spring, um, right around that summer solstice, and we're planting our summer crops. So there it is here, guys. Cover these guys up. You don't want to cover the tops of them too much. Maybe I'll rethink the spacing here on some of them. Another really good tip for these alliums, they're pretty heavy feeders here, guys. Ideally, you should amend your soil with some organic fertilizer. I had done that um, in the spring of this year. So, and I don't have any actually just lying around. So. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but it's definitely in the spring. I think it's a really good idea to put down some fertilizer, feed your plants, and uh, these, these garlic plants will have a much better chance to getting to the largest size possible. Um, but you do need this particular size here. Now we also have some elephant garlic. We're going to do a very, very similar thing as they are planted the same way, basically they're just larger cloves of garlic, essentially. These I particularly really am gonna look forward to this year for the purposes of, um, you know, having these guys actually for leeks because the stems, the stalks can be used as leeks. You can also harvest the, uh, the scapes, which is really awesome. As I said, probably the best part about growing garlic is actually the scapes. Um, and then of course you have the bulb. So we can harvest these guys all the time in many different ways. Um, I can even use them as a perennial and plant them, let's say around my fruit trees and uh, they'll do really well. But it's the same exact principle, guys. We're gonna plant them the same way I planted the garlic, except I'm gonna give them a little bit more room because they're larger plants. So instead of four inches, I might go uh, six inches, I might go eight inches. And then in between the rows, I'll double that and give them more room in between the rows because therefore that's where the summer crops are going to go. 
So that's the elephant garlic, that's the garlic. And then the last thing I want to show you is actually the onions, which I, again, I have these from sets. And these are a little bit different than the garlic in just the sense of what I'm going to be doing. Uh, because I'm going to be planting them multi-sown. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make use of this space even more by doing something called a multi-sow, which is a, a technique that Charles uh, Dowding uses. And we're going to see how this works because I, I have never done onions from sets ever. And I've never done onions from sets in the fall. And I don't even know if that's really the best thing that you should do. But these are onions that I failed at growing. I failed at growing these guys this spring. We started them indoors from seed. And I harvest them here. I harvested them as little onions, little pearl onions, basically. And I let them dry, obviously. I let them cure. And then I said, well, why? And then I said, why waste these? You know, um, they're obviously pretty good to eat. They're annoying, I guess, to cut these up and, and use them in the kitchen, but I could also just plant them, right? I could also just plant them as a set, whether I plant them in the spring, I plant them in the fall. I imagine this will work and I hope it works. Um, now the thing about onion sets versus planting them from seed is that a lot of people complain about them going to seed is that these onions here from set they go to seed and that's going to be their natural life cycle particularly i know what's going to happen here um, because if you overwinter these walla walla onions they're a very hardy onion by the way and you got to kind of pay attention to that because if you live somewhere that's just too cold you may not be able to do what i'm doing right now but certainly if you mulch your onions they're going to have a much better chance of survival and also the genetics plays a big part but, you know, that's kind of the natural life cycle. You let them go through the winter time, just like if you were to overwinter some brassicas or overwinter some other plants. The following year, they're going to then flower. And that's kind of going to want what these things, these onions here are going to want to do. And you basically just harvest them right at the time they're about to flower or right before, you know, whenever is good for you guys. And you may not get the biggest onion. You may not have the largest onion. But you will have onions, and you will have uh, significantly larger onions than I have here, <laughs> which are really about the size of my thumb. Um, so again, these are basically just sets, and I'm doing the multi sown So what's going to happen is I'm planting four or five of these. Let's just take these four as an example. I'm planting these four in one clump. I'm going to plant all four of these in the same hole. And what's gonna happen is just like that, they're gonna grow away from each other, apart from each other. And I'm gonna be able to get a lot of food, a lot of onions in a much smaller space. Rather than planting every single onion by itself um, and spacing them out, let's say four to six to eight inches, um, I could plant this one clump and they'll form um, each individual onion here will form a decently good sized onion and therefore I will have a higher overall yield of growing onions and I've done this actually uh, with uh, seedlings that I grew and I've showed you guys the results of that a couple years ago it's a really successful method that Charles Dowding a market gardener market farmer um, has basically introduced this method to a lot of people uh, he does videos in uh, on YouTube as well he's in England and he is really a big proponent of multi sowing them essentially doing uh, from sowing he does about 12 onions in one clump and from that 12 he then thins it out um, when they're at the green onion stage so he'll harvest some he just twists them out when they're like a green onion and he'll use them as green onions. So sell them as green onions. And then his actual onions will remain about four or five of them. And out of the four or five, he gets about two of them that are a great size. And then maybe the rest, two or three of them are about a medium to small size. So um, it's kind of a mixed bag and you have to really perfect this method. I don't think it's for everybody. I think you need really good um, 
uh, nutrients in your soil. You got to definitely have a lot of nutrients. Um, you got to be doing this right. I think it takes a couple years really to perfect it, but if you do this, I will have a higher yield. So what I'm going to do is actually start in this corner here. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the garlic is I'm just going to stick a couple of these onions in here. And that's one clump. So I did four in that one. These onion sets. It's essentially what I'm doing. So I have no doubt that they're going to flower. You know, that's really big, everybody's big concern with these. But ju you just have to know, I mean, that's just what's going to happen with the life cycle of these. And then I'm going to do another clump about eight inches apart. This is the standard spacing that Charles uses for this method. The standard spacing. It's the spacing that Charles uses. And these will survive. Again, I mentioned that they will survive the winter time here. And it's more like a foot. So there you go, four onions per clump every eight inches. I'm gonna do that all the way down. And then in between the rows here are gonna go some of those summer crops, just like I said. So eight inches, let's go 16 inches away. So we'll start another row here. And the spacing on this stuff, you know, we're gonna have to play around with the spacing. This is my first year doing it like this. You know, growing the alliums here and then succession planting in the summer crops. We did do this with the garlic this year. Um, not exactly to the extent this is going to be like this is going to be as perfect as it can get or as perfect as I can get it. But this year, all I did was harvest my garlic. And then the following season or the following year or the following uh, succession planting, I should say. Um, I planted, I direct seeded my cucumbers and my cucumbers came in and gave me a ton of food. I was able to make so many pickles this year. So I'm going to bring you guys in, show you exactly what I just did. Cause I know someone's going to want to know if you're still at this point of the video, I really appreciate it. But so here we go. Here's the four onion sets per clump. Eight feet or eight inches apart is the next clump of onions. That's four onions there. In between is 16 inches. So in between each row. And then again, in between these rows around May 15th, June 1st, we transplant in the summer crops. And this will give us basically, like I said, the best use of this space really all year you know, 365 days out of the year, something will be here. And I think, honestly, it doesn't get better than this in terms of making use of your space, right? The alliums just somehow coincide so well with the summer crops. All the spring crops coincide so well with the fall crops. And that's just kind of how I think about it now, going forward, making so much use of this small space here, guys. Um, I really hope that some of you guys will try this. Um, of course, we're getting close to that time of planting the allium. So this will be the beginning maybe for you guys. Um, I've been doing this for a number of years now with the spring crops, the fall crops. This is really the first year now that we're doing with this with the alliums. And then, of course, the summer crops. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I really am because I, I say every year I grow more food in a smaller space. But... It's true. And this is, I think, really going to write home the point of really making use, so much use of this little space. Um, feed your soil, guys. That's so, so key when you're doing this so densely. We got to feed our soil. We got to add more compost to this area. Don't get it mistaken. We got to add a lot of fertility. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Get, get to planting. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Hit that subscribe button for me. Take care, everybody.